This video is going to show you how to weave hexagon angle weave with beads by me, Gwen Fisher, from Bead Infinitum. I created this presentation using Doceri software, which is the premier software suite for hand-drawn communication of all sorts, designed specifically for teachers. So I want to show you on the top left here is a basic patch of hexagon weave, and here you can see a loop of six beads, which is why we call it a hexagon, because of the six. And around that loop, we have six more loops, and that's basically how the weave repeats. On the top right, I have a patch that has smaller hexagons because the beads are smaller, but you can see from this patch that you can color hexagon angle weave in a similar way that you might do with peyote stitch, peyote stitch to create designs. On the bottom left, I use two different sizes of beads, size 8 and size 11. And in this patch, you can see that the loops are of two different types. So we have a loop like the one in the center where it's with this, we have a loop like the one in the center which has all size 11 seed beads. And then we have these other loops that alternate between 11s and 8s. And then we have another round of loops that have again all size 11 seed beads. And it's this, this patch that I'm going to show you how to weave in the instructions. In the bottom center, I have a patch that has both size um, 15 and size 11 seed beads. And it's very similar to the patch on the left, except I switched the larger and the smaller beads. And I also added a single size 15 bead to each point on the outside when I was doing my final pass around the outside edge to make them a little bit pointy. And then the patch on the bottom right is very similar, but the loop in the center has seven beads instead of six, and so that created seven loops around. And while this makes a nice little bobble or dangle, it won't repeat in the same way regular hexagon weave will. I want to show you something else that you can make with this weave. So here's a bracelet and a matching pair of earrings. Um, the bracelet is going to use the identical weave that I'm going to show in these instructions, but the earrings um, are a slight variation of hexagon angle weave that I showed you how to make in my previous video. And here's a picture of the bracelet lying flat. And you'll notice in this picture the thing that looks like a button isn't really a button. It's just hiding a hook and loop clasp. And you can see the loop all the way on the left side of the bracelet. And the thing that looks like a button is also a variation of hexagon angle weave, but I used seven beads in the center so that I got a seven-pointed star instead of a six-pointed star. And here's one final picture of the bracelet and earrings to show you how flexible this weave is, and it makes just really nice, uh, a really nice fabric. So to start the pattern itself, I'm going to show you, here's how we're going to be laying the beads out. So these are going to be the loops of, say, the size 11 seed beads. And then connecting them will be size 8 seed beads, or a larger bead in pink. So the beads I'm going to be drawing here are going to be the small blue and the large pink. But when I pick them up, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use the small green and then large purple over the top. So you can see when I'm actually adding the beads to the weave. And here are some suggested sizes of bead combinations you can use that I showed in the, the first photograph. So I'm going to start in the center here by picking up six small beads and passing through all the beads again to make a loop. And then I'm going to pass through one more bead. Then I pick up a large bead and six small beads. And I pass through the second bead I just picked up, which is also the first small bead that I just picked up. This sequence of seven beads we're going to be repeating over and over again throughout this weave. So again, I'm going to pick up a large bead and six small beads and pass through the second bead I just picked up. And then I pick up one large bead and I sew clockwise through two beads to position myself to be ready to start the next loop. Now you'll notice the loops with all the green beads in them, they're, they're laying counterclockwise, but we didn't really have to pay attention to that when we were doing the weaving. They'll just fall that way naturally. So we can pick up seven more beads and then pass through the second bead we just picked up. And then we pick up one large bead and sew clockwise through four beads. Now we're going to repeat that two more times, picking up the seven, passing through one, pick up one, and pass through four, sewing clockwise. Pick up seven, pass through the second bead, and then pick up one large bead 
and pass through four sewing clockwise. And then pick up seven and pass through the second bead and then pick up one bead and sew clockwise. This time we're going to actually have to sew clockwise through six beads to get us in the right position to be able to pick up that last large bead where we're going to sew clockwise around the loop until we exit a bead um, that's on the border of our patch. Now we're in a position to add more beads. So here's what it would look like as we add more patches. And this is the order that we're going to be sewing the loops in. And again, we only have to pay attention to the orientation that we sew when we're sewing the loops that have both large and small beads in them. So we're going to pick up seven beads, pass through the second bead we just picked up, pick up one bead, and pass through four. And repeat that by picking up seven, passing through the second bead we just picked up, pick up one bead, and passing through four. Repeat it again, pick up seven, pass through the second bead, pick up one, and pass through four, uh, six in this case, because it's the last loop in the round, we pick up one, we sew all the way around the loop until we get to the edge. And if we come out on this side, we can just flip the beadwork over and repeat the loops one through seven. And um, that's how we can just extend the beadwork. If we want to do another round, what the patch will look like is something like this. And then, of course, we can keep repeating over and over again to make the patch as long as we want. We can also repeat on the other end of the beadwork to make a bracelet. If we decide that we want our patch to be wider, we can go to a bead like this one with a yellow star and start adding more loops on this edge. So we pick up seven beads, we pass through the second bead we picked up, we pick up one bead and pass through four. We pick up seven beads, pass through the second bead we just picked up, pick up one bead, and pass through six. I'm going to call those loops eight and nine. And then we're going to pick up one bead and pass through six beads, and that's loop ten. So if we just repeat loops eight, nine, and ten, we can go all the way along the edge of our beadwork. And so we can continue doing that, and we can add more rows that way to make the patch as long as we want on that side. <coughs> We can also add loops on the other side. And here I'm going to show you what it would look like if you added a single loop at a time instead of two rows of loops. And so if we start at the bead with the pink star, we would pick up three beads and then pass through seven beads to position ourselves for the next loop. So we pick up three and pass through seven, pick up three, pass through seven, until we get to the end of our patch. And of course, we can keep adding more rounds as we choose to make the patch as large as we want in any direction that we want, which is one of the beauties of hexagon angle weave is that you can make your patch any size and shape that you want. So I hope you'll show me what you make. Thanks.